What a day. I'm so getting fired. In a lot of ways, sequels can be very risky. Either one, you don't add enough, or two, you add too much, and it changes from what you enjoyed about the first game. But in this case, Spider-Man 2 does seem to do a pretty good job with balancing those two things to the point that actually this game may be in fact my game of the year. But let me explain, this is more of a first impression than an actual review, meaning I haven't beat the game, but I have clocked in around 10 hours so far doing side quests in the main storyline as well, and I have a good idea about a lot of the mechanics and a lot of things going on with the game that I feel comfortable enough with explaining that to you guys and just giving you an idea of what you can expect if you choose to actually pick up this game. All right, now that's out of the way, let's get right into the video. Let's start off with some really cool things about this game. First off, one of the coolest things is the graphics. You can really tell that this game is really utilized in the PlayStation 5 to its fullest. And on top of that, you can also tell that the people that made this game was made by probably Sony's best studio, Insomniac. And if you played the latest Ratchet and Clank games without giving any spoilers away, you can tell that this is the same team that worked on that game. The graphics are jaw dropping and like I said, they take full advantage of the hardware. The detail of the New York City and the fluidity of Spider-Man's movement and there's so much lifelike expressions across the entire cast of characters. A very big and diverse cast of characters makes it actually feel like you're actually in the world of Spider-Man. And between the voice acting, the great facial expressions, and just the storyline, I actually don't get tired of any character in this game. They all are relatively interesting, and no character is used too much or too little, for my opinion. Now speaking of characters, obviously there's an introduction of Miles Morales being a playable character along with Peter Parker. Being able to alter between both characters gives you a more diverse gameplay and style where each character has their own separate skill trees on top of having a joint skill tree. And the skill tree updates even more once Peter gets the black suit. When that does happen, it seems that it gives Peter a good power boost in terms of Miles' power level, where at the start of the game, Miles seems to be able to hit a little bit harder, but Peter doesn't quite hit as hard at Miles at first but once you get the symbiote that totally changes now i will say a small little gripe talking about the symbiote and this is very small i do wish the game felt more like you actually had a symbiote maybe my mind's just going back to the old spider-man game web of shadows but in that game when you switched over to the symbiote you actually felt significantly more powerful where in this game you do see a power boost you do get to go into something kind of like the spartan rage from the god of war series and just obliterate your enemies and take it pretty much no damage. But outside of those, you do have a few different special moves that you can do, but besides that, all your normal moves are, are pretty much the same as the regular Spider-Man moves. And it would be cool if you could pretty much run faster, swing faster, and just get an all around better sense of what it feels like to have this raw power of the symbiote. But again, that's just a very small gripe in this really great game. Now, as far as the combat system goes, it's actually pretty awesome. It is more or less very similar to how it was in the original two games, but a little bit more redefined, combining Peter's acrobatics and gadgets with Miles' bioelectric powers. But even with all that being the case, you can tell that Insomniac did a lot to actually balance those power levels out just a little bit, where it seems like Miles can't cloak for as long and there's significantly less gadgets. Now, I will say the gadgets that you do get are actually a lot more useful than a lot of the gadgets that were in the Spider-Man 1 game but regardless it just seems like they really just fine-tuned this combat experience and they just made it more seamless. there's a lot more web-based moves that you can do one thing i do love is that you can slingshot yourself miles down the road one of my favorite parts of the game was when you got hit by a really strong boss that sent you all the way across new york and you just slingshot right back Things like that really make you feel more like a Spider-Man character. And actually it's very fun. Traversal in this game is at its best level. And one thing that I really do enjoy is that Insomniac has actually helped with so many different skill levels and accessibilities. If you go into the setting, you can really tweak the game. You can even turn on certain things like swinging assistance, which I think is great for different players of all different tier levels. And one other thing that you can do in the settings is you can switch between like a lot of different PlayStation games. You have fidelity and performance. Both modes if I'm correct, leave ray tracing turned on. So you don't have to worry about losing that ray tracing. But as for me, I still did fidelity, even though performance doesn't look that much different. I still like that little boost of quality over performance, but that's just me. Now I will say not everything is totally perfect with this game. There are some things like bugs, 
Bugs is something that if you go online right now, you hear a lot about, a lot of people are going back and forth about the bugs and they're comparing it to games like Starfield. While I don't feel that this game is nearly as buggy as Starfield, I have seen a lot of things online that talked about it. In my personal experience, I have seen almost no bugs for the most part. Maybe a little few things here and there, but for the most part, I don't see them. On top of the fact that no matter how high or fast I swing, Insomniac has done a really good job to make sure that I see zero pop in. Now, does that mean the game doesn't have any popping at all no to my naked eye no I have not noticed it while playing it on my 65 inch 4k TV the same thing it goes for my wife who's also been playing it where she hasn't experienced pretty much any bugs as well so I can say if you're worried about the bugs don't be I don't feel like they're anything that's gonna really deter the game or break it too much for you now I will say in fairness in playing it in the 10 hours or so I played it for I've only seen one crash where the game totally closed out and I just had to restart it again but fortunately it did a good job at saving my progress so I was able to pick up right where I left off. As far as the story goes to the point that I'm at I don't want to give anything away but it does a really good job at actually balancing the lives of Peter and Miles. In a lot of respects this game reminds me of the Spider-Man 2 movie where things were starting to get better and better for Peter. Even though this game doesn't start where Peter's life is in the best state it does seem to get to a pretty good point for him at one point before it starts crumbling down again marvel's not going to allow peter to have a good life for too long where miles seems to have so much going for him but he's still struggling with this new life of being spider-man also trying to pursue a college career life with his friends and continue building his relationship with his mom and one thing i definitely love about miles storyline is his mom seems to be pouring him in there for him but at the same time she seems to have a level of frustration that you definitely see go into the story when it comes to miles putting everything aside to pursue this life as a superhero. Ultimately, it's great to see a lot of good things going for Peter and with his relationship with Mary Jane. It's also great to see him with his best friend Harry again, being able to see deeper into Peter's lifestyle with a bunch of different flashbacks and really getting able to understand this universe, Peter Parker. Like I said, I'm going to refrain from getting too deep into storyline because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I do like how they do a good background story for a lot of characters in this game, especially for people that may be newer to the Spider-Man franchise. Believe it or not, there are some people out there. One other thing that I wholeheartedly enjoy was the many many cameos that are in this game there were people that i did not expect to even see in this game and i'm not going to go over any of them in this video a lot of them even put a smile on my face when i just seen the reference in a lot of respects i felt that the first spider-man was kind of the spider-man version of the Arkham series, but this game seems to really step out and be its own type of game. Even though it did add gliding mechanics like the Batman Arkham series did, a lot of things about this still feels different. In summary, the new Marvel Spider-Man 2 game is a promising addition to the superhero gaming world, but it's not without its risk. The game has undeniable stunning graphics. The game does a phenomenal job balancing between Miles and Peter Parker, where I thought I was going to be switching between them more often and maybe in a later game I actually will be switching between them more. For the most part I find myself playing as one character for a good chunk of time before switching to another one just to knock off some of the missions. But that's not really a bad thing. Ultimately it's enjoyable regardless. If I really had to say anything that was just really bad about the game, which again this isn't really bad, is that a lot of the fighting and certain gameplay mechanics are the same from the previous game and they were fine in those games. Some combat moves didn't change and I noticed a lot of finishers were exactly the same, but they added some new ones in and ultimately at the end of the day, it's fine. That's not a big deal. And one thing I definitely have to touch on is again, I'm about 10 hours into this game. Now, if you go online, you'll see a lot of people saying that this is a 12 hour game and maybe if you blow through the game's campaign, it is. But if you actually just dive in and play all of the content in the game that it actually offers, this game is probably somewhere between the 20 and 30 hour range, and I'm definitely taking my time to do everything I can in this game. It's extremely fun. And before I even finish this game, I actually can't wait to see what are the next games in this franchise. If you're a fan of Spider-Man and own a PlayStation 5, you should already own this game. And maybe if you're not the biggest Spider-Man fan, or maybe you're just tired of Marvel, especially with all the movies going on, I still suggest checking this game out because it's just that fun. But ultimately, that's just my thoughts on the game. Comment down below, what do you guys think? Do you have the game? Do you not have it? Are you planning on getting it if you don't have it? Let me know down below. This is definitely a pick up and buy game. Thanks for everyone that watched the video and I want to thank the new subscribers to the channel. And for the new viewers, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and like the video. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Don't leave me hanging. I'm trying to soak over here. Not on my watch. Come on. 
You're too much, man. 